Hello, I'm Karen, and this is part two of um, doing the sheep. So in this one, we're making, um, I'm calling them the arms and legs. I know I'm humanising sheep, and I also have humanised them by putting eyebrows on them, but we're doing the legs and ears in today's video, okay? And also, I will share with you how I prepared the yarn to be able to stuff, to be able to do the black sheep, because I couldn't get hold of any um, black stuff in to be able to do it. Okay, I'd, but tell you something, <laughs> to get the eyes as well, this this one costs more because I bought a whole set of, um, you know, the kits where you get all of the different eyes in it because all these other ones have all got like the same little standard eyes and nose, but I knew they wouldn't show up, show up on this yarn, so um, I bought a whole set just so I could get these purpley sparkly eyes because I loved them so much. Um, anyway, I'm distracted. So... By rights, if you've followed the other video um, and you've done what we've said to do, you've actually got your two pieces. You've either made it all the way up to 14, like I've actually told you to do in the top half, or you gave up and you only did 12, like I showed you in my original version. I actually did only do 12 when I was first trying to work out the pattern. And you've got your back piece, which has got the 14 um, bubbles on it. So I'm going to get my yarn and... So realistically, it's best to start with the legs on both of the pieces. It's easier to not do the legs on the front side, but the back side, you want to make sure you've definitely doing your arms, you know, because I said to you about that little tilt that goes off, you want to make sure they're in the same place. So I'm going to show you how to put the um, legs on first. So we're going to leave a nice long tail end because we need in all those for sewing in. Begin with a twist. We're going straight in with the single crochet or double crochet stitch depending where you're from and so you're going to go right in so into the end chain you're going to make uh, one stitch there and we need to make four so that's two three and oops four and then we just turn and we're going to make eight rows of this so because when we've done the stitch it's a bit loose and, you, and your tail end sticks at the top of the stitch. Just so that you're aware when you're doing that. Okay, um, we don't do any chaining like we didn't with the other ones. And we're just going to just do, like I said, do it so we've got eight rows. And it's a bit of a weird stitch there, don't worry, because at the end of the day, it's all going to, you're going to use all of those ends for sewing in your, whoa, <laughs> sewing in your tail ends. Um, okay, so like I said to you before, this is King Charles the um, Thirds sheep crochet pattern and I've already told you so we've got 11 bubbles going across which made the month that he was born which is November we've got the 14 bubbles uh, going um, on the length of that so it's the 14th of November and the we need to make four legs and they all are made exactly the same with eight rows so we've got our four and our eight because he was born in 1948 so just so that you've got that little bit of <laughs> thing um, and um, yeah so that's just a lovely way as well of actually remembering how to do the actual pattern um, I'm just trying to get that stitch in there it was a really stiff stitch okay so I know each time I come in past so this stitch here sits technically on row two so that's two four that makes me number five so I'm on row number six so these only take you a couple of minutes to do the um, arms and legs or just legs because technically they are sheep and they don't actually really have arms. But these sheep are absolutely lovely. They're very, very tactile um, for the texture of them. Uh, my daughter was um, quite cheeky with me saying that it reminded her of the mop that I use on the floor, which, yes, OK, I can see where she's coming from. Um, so and we could also probably utilise this pattern to make a spare if we wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very tactile pattern. Uh, it's nice and soft. Obviously, using the safety eyes and noses is makes it suitable for children. And if you are going to be doing where you're stuffing with the actual yarn itself this is my last stitch by the way yeah so i've got two i'm doing these lines four six and that's eight so i've got my old scissors here because i need these old scissors to share with you how we do um the stuffing so 
you what you would do is you'd add on your legs so when you go to do the other leg so this one obviously i started from this side and work that way you just turn your work over make it easy as possible for yourself and then you work your four stitches that way and you make your other leg now for the actual arms um, at the sides the legs at the side we want to make sure that they're equal so what you can do is you can get a different you can put little markers in but on one side of them so on this side we're if we need them to be um, depending on how you're working it whether you're coming up or down so if i was going to work this side of it i need to count up one two three four five six only seven of the actual bubbles okay because i want my stitches to fit on here if i wanted to match this one i'd start from the top of the bubble there and work my way down so i'd go into the top of the bubble underneath the bubble top of the bubble underneath the bubble to make four stitches so when you're doing the actual back piece of it you need to on one side when you're trying to join on obviously you're going to be working up the work so it's one two three four five six seven so you're going to start from the bottom of the bubble and work up and you just do exactly the same thing um so we don't need to really show you i don't think i need to show you that bit and um, the other bit that i want to share with you so we've got so that's so you just do that obviously make sure they're all matching up and you will see if once you've done one of your arms like see because the way the stripes go it sort of goes what it almost looks wonky but let's show you a piece that we've got that is finished so this is the back with all of its arms and its legs and its ears all into place lots and lots of tail ends and this is the front now I've done one of the ears and I wanted to share with you how to do this ear just because of what happens. So I'm going to get my other yarn and then I'll show you how to make the stuff in but I'll also start you, show you how to sew as well because you want to make it look as nice as possible. Okay so I'm going to begin with a twist on my hook. I'm going to go into this one which is now a really loose stitch at the very end and I'm going to make that single crochet or double crochet depending where you're from and it's going to be loose it is going to do that it's normal you're going to come into the next bit along and do your next stitch so that's two stitches and then you can use your tail ends to pull this tight you'll tie those together ultimately end so that's two the ears is done with the same joining on of four stitches that's three stitches and then that's four and then you turn your work, you skip the very first stitch, you work into the rest of the stitches. So there's only three stitches on this row. And this is your weird stitch at the end there, so don't worry. And then you're going to turn your work again. And now we're only going to do two stitches because you're going to always skip the first stitch. So that's two stitches. Turn my work and do one more stitch. And that is how quick and easy it is to add the ear like I said so this bit here where you've done this join you'd be tying this in a nice tight knot just to keep that one nice and secure I'll do two like that okay and then what you're going to do is you start from the bottom it's easier to start from the bottom to do the sewing in so we've got little bits where we've got two tail ends together there make sure that they're tied up so that they're keeping all your work as snug as possible and you're going to be using your um, a wide-eyed darning needle and one of your tail ends. I'm choosing that one because that one seems to be a little bit longer. There. And we're going to get the other piece and you're just going to literally be sandwiching them together. So you're going to be... you And I say, there is loads of tail ends. <laughs> there is loads of tail ends. I think there's a total of 28 tail, end, tail ends that you're going to sew in all together. But what you're going to do is if you start at the very bottom, make sure that these, where you've joined on to your actual work, you're going to be coming from there. So you're going to come into your work this way round. We're doing, I think it's called a mattress stitch. And then you're going to go over the top of this one and then under and out of the other one. And make sure your stitches are nice and tight. And then all you do is you work along until you get to your next little bit of a tail end. Okay, so I'm just going to get to these bits here and I'm getting to the end. So I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to leave it still sticking out. I have actually got two tail ends here, so it's nicer just to make things easier as you go along. You're going to tie your little knots. 
and then pick up one of these tail ends and continue working and you're going to be working all the way around so what you do is you ultimately you want to get it sewn all the way to like I'm going to say the armpits I know it's not really an arm but each side all the way there and then you would start stuffing in your legs so you stuff in your legs first wouldn't once you've actually got this section stuffed, you can finish off all of these tail ends and use those as part of your stuffing. And I'll show you how, if you're going to use yarn as stuffing, which my yarn's got tangled up there, this is the easiest way to make sure that it's um, safe, you know, if it does pop undone. <laughs> so you're going to get your, so I just get my yarn in my hand, so on my thumb, go to my finger, come around and keep doing that. So I counted, so I've done it 16 times. So that's what I'm going to say, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. A little bit longer, did an extra one. And then what I did, so I cut it off at the end. So that's my piece, so it's that's what I'm using. Put my scissors through, cut it there with my little finger. I know it's a bit awkward on the video. Cut it there. And then all my strands are roughly the same size and you need... 16 of these tail ends to stuff into one of the legs and you stuff it so that you you stuff it to the end but you're going to leave it because you want to make sure that it's got this movability so you just stuff it to a certain point and then you leave it and then when you stuff the actual body in yes it will come towards it but it will still give you the maneuverability on all of your actual limbs okay so in total you need 50 gram ball of yarn so one 50 gram ball of yarn so this one of these will make me a whole new one of these um, sheep there. And this one actually ends up about nine inches long. Um, so these are the ones, obviously I've done like the different little expressions on them, just so that you can um, just help with your storytelling. Obviously we've done all the different colour sheep because if you do go back in history, when, well, like, like when I was young, um, I was taught the song Bar Bar Black Sheep, which was referring to the actual yarn itself and the black sheep. It was never ever intended, as far as I'm ever aware, it wasn't intended to be um, a discriminating kind of nursery rhyme. But as time's gone by and the world has changed, um, to make sure that we're not discriminating against everybody, anybody, we've now included all the other colours of sheep. So you can have a bar bar white sheep, a brown sheep, a yellow sheep, a pink sheep, a blue sheep, whichever colour sheep you want, so that we become an inclusive nation. Um, and I think it's really cool that you can use these in storytelling, you can use them about, if you want to tell history and little fun facts about sheep. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, and obviously, like I said to you before, it, they all contain um, King Charles's birthday. Even if you did the 12 at the front, they're still going to have the... 11 bubbles across, so it's the it's the month, there's 14 bubbles on the back, so it's the 14th of November, we've got four limbs, 40, and then we've got the length of these limbs, which is eight long, or we've got the eight bubbles at the front, which is got the 48, and then we've got the two ears, which are four rows long, so that's 24, and this pattern was actually published the very first time in 2024 by King Charles. Um, and I found it in a game I played. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Um, oh, by the way, just so if you're interested, the game was all to do with something I was playing with crochet and the Voidic Manuscript, just so we've got everything in context. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Bye for now.